Hello class. Welcome to the last video of week two's uh, discussion of concavity and graph shapes. I'm sure there will be plenty of office hour videos to go with this, but as far as the official putting the lecture pieces together, uh, this is the end of it. So all of this video is going to be discussing this graph. So this is just some, some function and we want to talk about the ideas of turning points and inflection points in terms of this graph. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about, so we're going to talk about this question. If this graph is f of x, then where are the turning points of f of x and where are the inflection points of f of x? And I've labeled all the relevant x values. So this is really sort of a multiple choice question uh, where we're looking for things like a, b, c, d, e, f, g uh, to pick out. Okay, so think in your head real quick, where are the turning points going to be? Make sure you're sort of happy with your answer. And so as it happens, there will be three of them, one here, one here, and one here, where the function changes from increasing to decreasing, that's at B, where the function changes from decreasing to increasing, that's at D, and where the function changes then from increasing back to decreasing, that's at F. So B, D, and F, those are the turning points. Uh, the next question is, where are the inflection points? And so that is where the function changes concavity. So over here, the function's concave down, but then it changes to be concave up, and then it changes to be concave down. So the question is, where does it change from concave down to concave up? And where does it change then again from concave up back to concave down? And those are the inflection points. So that's there and there. Those are the places where the function switches, uh, again, from concave down to up and then from up to down. So the inflection points are at C and E. OK, probably you're pretty happy with this because we've been doing a bunch of examples of this with me pointing at graphs. Uh, with all of this. Okay. But that's not the main thing I wanted to do in this video. The main thing I wanted to do in this video was to instead answer this question, okay. uh, which is if instead of being a graph of f itself, this graph is a, is a graph of the derivative of f, what does that tell us about the turning points of f and the inflection points of f. Okay, so to do this, we have to think back to something we probably haven't thought about in a bit. We have to think back to what the graph of the derivative is telling us. Namely, we have to think back to whether, uh, or sorry, we have to think back to what it means to have a graph of the slopes of the tangent lines at each point. Okay. So let's start with turning points. Okay. And let's start with what does increasing look like in a graph of the derivative? Okay. So remember, increasing means positive derivative. And so I, if I'm looking for the spots where the function's increasing, again, this is not the function, this is the derivative. So if I'm looking for the spots where the function is increasing, then I'm only looking for the spots where the derivative is positive. That means that actually the function's increasing all the way from a over to g. So all of this in the middle corresponds to places where the function's increasing. Okay. On the other hand, when the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So over here, the function is decreasing, and over here, the function is decreasing. Okay. Uh, 
Again, when I point at this and say the function is increasing, please remember this is not the graph of the function. This is not the thing that I'm saying is decreasing, because the derivative is clearly increasing here, the function I'm pointing at, but the function I'm not seeing, the function of which this is the derivative, it is decreasing over this interval. Okay. So that means where does the function change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing? That is to say, where does it change uh, its tonicity? That's going to happen at the spots where the derivative switches from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay. And if you think about what we do algebraically when we go to find uh, the turning points, we take the derivative and we set it equal to zero. So we shouldn't maybe be surprised that the spots I'm looking for are places where the derivative is zero. So one of the turning points is A, and one of the turning points is G. Okay, now I mentioned places where the derivative is zero. There's one more of those. Namely, there's a place where the derivative is zero here at D. But though that D corresponds to a critical number, it does not correspond to a turning point. And that's because the function does not actually change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at this point. In fact, it's actually increasing on both sides. So the graph of the function, again, this is the derivative, but the graph of the function at D looks something like that, where it's increasing and increasing, but it's slowing down and how it's decreasing until it's decreasing at sort of a flat, or sorry, until it's increasing at sort of a flat rate, and then it goes back to increasing again. And so this is not a turning point. The function's really increasing through that whole period. Okay. Now I have to think about where are the inflection points of, again, the function of which this is the derivative. Okay. Now, there's a couple different ways to think about this. And so I'm going to give you a couple different ways. They'll all give you the same answer. And then you can think about this whichever one you like. Okay. So here's one way to think about it. We said that things are concave up when the second derivative is positive. And so let's think, where is the original function concave up? That is, where is the second derivative of the function positive? Now, this again, this is not the function. This is the first derivative of the function. And so what is the relationship between this function and the second derivative? Well, the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. And so the second derivative, and so this is why this hurts your head a bit, the second derivative, which tells me whether the function is uh, concave up or concave down, it's the derivative of this graph. So I know whether the function's concave up or concave down by whether the first derivative of this graph of the derivative is positive or negative. Okay. So here, the derivative of this graph, which is to say the derivative of the derivative, is positive. So over this whole piece, the original function is concave up. Over this piece, the derivative of the derivative is negative, so the second derivative is negative, and so it's concave down. Okay. Then back to the derivative of the derivative is positive, so it's concave up, and then back to the derivative of the derivative is negative, so it's concave down. Okay. And so the inflection points are the places where that changed. Well, where did it change? Okay, so here the derivative of the derivative is positive. Here it's negative. It changed right there. That b, that's an inflection point in the original graph. Because on the left side of this, again, the derivative of the derivative is positive. So it's concave up. And on the right of it, the derivative of the derivative is negative. And so it's concave down. 
Uh, likewise, the opposite thing happens here at D. Uh, and then we go back to F, and this all happens again. So B, D, and F, these points in the graph of the derivative correspond to tangent, or sorry, correspond to inflection points in the graph of the original function. Okay, here's another way to think about the same thing I just said. Okay. Namely, when we talked about concave up, we said concave up means that it bends, the graph bends above the tangent line. Uh, and how does this graph end up bending above the tangent line? It bends above the tangent line because the derivative over here is bigger than the derivative at this point. Okay. Uh, and so that means that you're at a concave up point if on the graph of the derivative, the derivative is getting bigger. Okay. So this is a concave up point on the original graph because here the derivative is getting bigger the original function is going to increase faster here than it does here, which means the original graph is going to bend over the original graph. Okay. Uh, likewise, if I look at the concave down version of that, concave down means the graph bends below the tangent line. What does that mean? How does that happen? The graph bends below the tangent line when the function starts increasing slower than the tangent line. So when the derivative starts getting smaller. Okay. Uh, and so here, for example, if I compare this point and this point along the graph, the derivative is smaller at the later point than it is at the earlier point, which means the graph is actually going to end up under the tangent line, which means the function is going to end up being concave down. Okay. And so if you parse out all of what I just said, basically it gets summarized as, po as follows. In the graph of the derivative, concave up turns into increasing and concave down turns into decreasing. Okay. And so this whole piece corresponds to concave up in the original graph. This piece corresponds to concave down in the original graph, concave up again, and concave down over here. Uh, and so like before, my inflection points end up being these three, B, D, and F. Okay, this video is going on a bit long, but I want to ask one more question real quick. Namely, I want to ask the question, if this graph were instead now the graph of the second derivative of the function, what could we say? Okay. Now, we haven't thought a lot about graphs of the second derivative. In fact, maybe this is the first time anyone has ever said the phrase graphs of the second derivative to you. But I can tell one thing from this, namely I can tell where the inflection points are. I can't actually even tell where the turning points are anymore. I've lost that information when I've taken the derivative, but I can tell you where the inflection points are. Okay. I'll give you a second, just think for a second, where are the inflection points going to be? Okay. And what am I looking for? when I'm looking for an inflection point. Again, I'm looking for a place where the function changes from concave up to concave down, or concave down to concave up. Okay. And what's that gonna look like in a graph of the second derivative? Well, the second derivative being positive is the same thing as concave up, and the second derivative being negative is the same thing as being concave down. Okay. And so the inflection points here actually are this point where the second derivative switches from negative to positive, which means the original graph at this exact point switches from concave down to concave up. Okay. And this point where, again, at this point, on the left side of this point, the second derivative is positive, 
And so that means the original function is concave up, and on the right side, it's ne the second derivative is negative, so the original function is concave down. Okay, so these are my two inflection points. This d is not an inflection point, even though the second derivative is zero there, because what happens is at that point, it's concave up on the left, because it's the second derivative is positive, but it's also concave up on the right. And so at that point, it doesn't actually switch concavity. So that is not an inflection point. So those are the only two. All right, I'll wrap up our discussions of concavity there for now. Uh, please, again, remember, let me know if you have any questions. You have a lot of ways to do that. So one of the ways you can let me know is you can post something in the forum. You can email me. I'll tell you about office hours next week, and I promise next week I'll tell you about when I'm going to have them more than two hours in advance. Uh, so all of these are available to you. Please let me know if you have any questions as you go through this. Until then, be well.